Anyone could become a serial killer or rapist based on the tough moments and choices they go through in life. This guy is a Japanese serial killer and rapist who raped around 93 girls and over 100 women. These terrible deeds might have been influenced by different reasons. What reasons compel him to do such deeds? Without delaying any further, let's dive into the case of this rapist and serial killer, Sitaro Fukiege, born on February 1st, 1889, and died on September 28th, 1926, was a notorious Japanese rapist and serial killer. His criminal activities spanned over two decades, during which he terrorized communities. Sitaro's corrupted acts began in 1906 when he committed his first murder. Shut up! marking the start of a reign of terror. Between 1,923 and 1924, Sitaro brutally took the lives of at least seven innocent girls, leaving a way of destruction in his wake. Despite being tried for only three of these cases, the true extent of his crimes remains shrouded in uncertainty, as the exact number of his victims remains unknown. Sitaro also engaged in the rape of numerous women, with estimates suggesting he raped over 100 victims, including 93 girls, and about 100 women. Sitaro's early life was marked by challenging circumstances and troubling behavior. Born in Shimajio-ku, Kyoto, he was forced to work at a young age and faced a series of legal issues, including arrests for theft. His experiences in jail led him to learn kana, math, and classical Chinese. His involvement in sexual activities with individuals of varying ages, including having sex with a 54-year-old woman at 17 and later committing acts of rape against underage girls, is deeply concerning and raises ethical and legal considerations. The actions that Sitaro committed, such as raping and murdering an 11-year-old girl in 1906, were deeply concerning and violated moral and legal standards. Despite his cultural age of 18 at the time, he was actually 17 under Western age systems. While in jail, he immersed himself in the works of philosophers. Following his release in 1922, he faced challenges in finding and retaining work due to his criminal past. A subsequent arrest in 1923 for molesting a young child highlighted ongoing behavioral issues. These serious events underscore the need for appropriate accountability and consequences for such harmful actions. During the period between June 1923 and April 1924, Sitaro committed a series of heinous crimes, including the rape and murder of six girls between the ages of 11 and 16. His arrest on July 28, 1924, led to a confession of 13 murders but he later retracted his statement, claiming he had only killed six girls and alleging police influence during interrogation. Sitaro authored a book titled Shaba the Street. He was ultimately sentenced to death on May 17, 1925, a judgment upheld by the Supreme Court of Japan on July 2, 1926. These events showcase the grave and tragic consequences of his criminal actions and the legal processes that followed. Sitaro was hanged to death on September 28, 1926. Reports in the media said he faced his end with bravery, unlike many others in similar situations. Before he died, he wrote a book asking parents to look after their kids well. It shows he cared about the future and wanted parents to take good care of their children, even in tough times. Please take care of yourself and your loved ones. We will be back with another mysterious true crime documentary.